Welcome to the first of several examples on how to graph and find the key components of a hyperbola. Because this is our first example, let's review the definition of a hyperbola. A hyperbola is a set of all points on the coordinate plane for which the absolute value of the differences between the distances from two fixed points called foci is constant. Notice this definition is very similar to an ellipse, except an ellipse deals with the sum of distances and the hyperbola deals with the differences of distances. So looking at the two hyperbolas below, a hyperbola can open left and right if we have a horizontal transverse or major axis, which would be this axis here. And the hyperbola can open up and down if we have a vertical transverse axis or vertical major axis, which would be this axis here. So by definition, if we find the length of the red segment, which is a distance from this black point to one focus, and then find the length of the blue segment, which is a distance from the black point to the other focus, the absolute value of the difference of these two distances will always be constant for any point on the hyperbola. To get a better feel for this, let's look at an animation. This graph is showing us that if we consider this point on the hyperbola, and then we find the distance to one focus, the distance to the other focus, and then find the absolute value of the difference, it's always going to be equal to 2.4 for this hyperbola. Notice as this point moves, the difference between the distances stays constant. Notice how it's still 2.4. If we pick a point on the other branch of the hyperbola, again notice how the difference of the distances stays constant at 2.4. Now let's review the standard form of a hyperbola. First, if the equation is in this form here, where we have the quantity x minus h squared first, and then minus the quantity y minus k squared, we'll have a horizontal transverse axis or horizontal major axis. But if the equation is in the form the quantity y minus k squared minus the quantity x minus h squared, we'll have a vertical transverse axis or vertical major axis as we see here. Notice how the denominator of the first fraction or the positive fraction is always a squared, which gives us the distance from the center to the two endpoints of the transverse axis, which are also the vertices of the hyperbola. And notice this is true whether we have a horizontal or vertical transverse axis. Next, the denominator of the fraction that we're subtracting is always equal to b squared, where b gives us the distance from the center to the two endpoints of the conjugate or minor axis. As, as we see here or here, if we have a vertical transverse axis. So notice how the length of the major axis in both cases is equal to 2a. The length of the minor axis or conjugate axis is equal to 2b in both cases. A couple of things to notice here. These lines here are called the asymptotes of the hyperbola. Notice how if we form a rectangle using the endpoints of the transverse and conjugate axis, the asymptotes are the diagonals of the rectangle, again in both cases. And then finally, the distance from the center to the two foci is equal to c units, and we can find c using the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So let's go back and take a look at our example. The first thing we should notice is our equation is in the form of x squared minus y squared. Since the first fraction of the positive fraction contains the x part of the equation, we are going to have a horizontal major axis or horizontal transverse axis. So our hyperbola will look something like this, where the branches will open left and right. So we know we're going to have a horizontal transverse axis. Next, the denominator of the first fraction, or we can think of it as the positive fraction, is going to be equal to a squared. So we know a squared is four. The denominator of the fraction that we're subtracting is going to be equal to b squared. So we know that a squared equals four. We're only concerned about the positive value of a, so we know a is going to be equal to two. And we know b squared equals nine which means the positive value of b would be b equals three. 
Now the center of the hyperbola will have coordinates h, k, and since we have x squared here and y squared here, that means both h and k would be zero, and therefore the center would be the origin with coordinates zero, zero. So this would be our center. Next, because we have a horizontal transverse axis, the two vertices, which are also the end points of the transverse axis, will be a units to the left and right of the center, and since a is equal to two, one vertex would be two units to the left of the center, which would be here, and the other vertex would be two units to the right of the center, which would be here. So the coordinates of the vertices, or the end points of the transverse or major axis, would be negative two, zero, and two, zero. Let's come back to the foci and let's find the endpoints of the conjugate axis next, which would be this segment here, and notice how the endpoints would be b units above and below the center, since the length is 2b and the center is the midpoint of the segment. So if we wanted to, we could label this b and this b here. And since b is equal to three, one endpoint would be three units below the center, which would be here, the other end point would be three units above, which would be here. Let's go and label these two V for vertices. So the end points of the conjugate axis, or this axis here, would be zero, negative three, and zero, three. And just to keep things consistent, this is our transverse or major axis. Now as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be helpful if we form a rectangle using the endpoints of the transverse and conjugate axis. And so the rectangle would look like this, where the endpoints are actually the midpoint of each side of the rectangle. The reason this is helpful is now we can easily sketch the asymptotes of the hyperbola because they would be the lines that contain the diagonals of the rectangle and also pass to the center of the hyperbola. So one asymptote would look like this. The other asymptote would look like this. So again, before we find the foci, let's go ahead and find the equation of the two asymptotes. Let's first consider this line here it has a positive slope and passes through the origin. Well, if it passes through the origin, we know that the y-intercept would be zero. So if we're using the form of the equation y equals mx plus b, notice both lines have a y-intercept of zero. So if we can find the slope, we'll know the equation. Well, again, looking at the line that has a positive slope, if we consider the center of the hyperbola, which is on the line and this point here, Notice how we'd have to go up three units, which is actually B, and right A units, which is two. So if we go up three and right two, we know the slope is three halves, and therefore the equation of one asymptote is Y equals three halves X. And then for the line with the negative slope, if we consider this point here, as well as the point at the center, we would have to go down three units, or down B units, and write two units, or write a units, and therefore the equation would be y equals negative three halves x. Again, we could memorize the formula y equals b over a times x, and y equals negative b divided by a times x, but if we can make sense of the equations from the coordinate plane, that's one less thing we have to memorize. And now to find the foci, we'll have to find c, which will give us the distance from the center to the two foci. So to find c, we'll have to use the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared, since we know a squared and b squared. So we would have c squared equals a squared or four plus b squared or nine, so c squared equals 13. Again, we're only concerned about the positive value of c, so we'll take the principal square root. So c is equal to square root 13, which will help us find the exact coordinates of the foci, but if we want to plot them, we we'll want a decimal approximation. Square root 13 is approximately 
So because we have a horizontal transverse axis, the foci will be approximately 3.6 units to the right and left of the center. So one focus would be approximately here. The other focus would be approximately here. So to find the exact coordinates of the foci, we would have to add and subtract square root 13 from the x coordinate of the center, which means the coordinates would be negative square root 13, zero, and positive square root 13, zero. So now we'll finish by sketching the hyperbola. We know it's gonna pass through the vertex and approach the asymptotes, so the branch on the right would look something like this. And the branch on the left would look something like this. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.